All right, welcome to Taste Take. If you're new here, today we're doing a spoiler-free review of the new movie, A Quiet Place, Day One. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular taste takers, let's see if I think this one's gonna make any noise at the box office. Get it? No, they probably get that one. Quick background here, A Quiet Place Day One is the prequel in this now kinda iconic franchise that's set before the events of A Quiet Place Part One and A Quiet Place Part Two. A Quiet Place Part One was written by two dudes named Scott Beck and Brian Woods. Paramount bought the script from them before John Krasinski got on board. John saw the script and wanted to rewrite it. Paramount was like, all right, bro, that's cool, but we want you to be in it. John was like, all right, bro, that's cool, but I also want to direct it. And Paramount was like, all right, bro, that's cool, but we also want your wife to be in it with you. John was like, all right, bro, that's cool, let's go to work. John said he wrote that script as a love letter to his kids. He didn't really want to make a horror or thriller movie per se. He just wanted to make a movie about a family that had those elements like around it. A Quiet Place Part 1 comes out and becomes a huge hit at the box office, making almost $350 million on a $17 million budget. John Krasinski said he never wanted to make a sequel to A Quiet Place and that if the studio wanted to, they can just go find another director. Not like in a bitchy way, he's just saying I ain't want to make a sequel. Paramount's like, alright bro, that's cool, but if you were going to make a sequel, what would it be like? Two years later, A Quiet Place Part 2 was set to release in March of 2020. I don't gotta tell y'all what else happened in March of 2020. It was the real quiet place around here. It came out for real the next year in May and broke all sorts of records like becoming the highest grossing movie in the pandemic. The budget ballooned to almost $60 million and went on to make about $300 million at the box office. Yes, less than the first one, but keep in mind it was during the pandemic. And then of course to A Quiet Place Day One. Development on this movie started back in November of 2020 with Jeff Nichols set to write and direct. Jeff Nichols is a dude that made the movie Bike Riders that's out now. Anyway, by May of 2021, the script was completely finished. But by October of 2021, Jeff Nichols was dropped due to creative differences with John Krasinski. Keep in mind, John Krasinski is the one that asked him to do it in the first place. All right, so here's T. Jeff says that that movie was never gonna be his and that it had John's fingerprints all over it. So was he dropped from the project or did he leave the project? Anyway, after that little square fuffle, John Krasinski goes over to Michael Sarnowski who had just finished doing the movie Pig with Nicolas Cage. Michael went on to write and direct A Quiet Place Day One with John Krasinski still on tap as a producer, reportedly giving Michael free reign to make the movie how he wanted. A Quiet Place Day One finished shooting last year in London, which is one of my unwarranted pet peeves. I hate when they make New York movies not in New York. And I kind of understand the hurdles. Like, you can't just be filming all over the city all willy-nilly, and it's probably a lot cheaper to film over there in London. It just ain't the same. And you know how you could always tell? You could always tell it was a fake New York movie by the subway. They just can't seem to get our subways with the right amount of grime and despair. It's like the last Scream movie. Everyone's making a big deal of how Ghostface is taking his talents to New York City. They filmed that movie in Toronto. That ain't New York City. And it's the trains. You can see from the trains. That's like if someone asks for a Coke and you give them not even Diet Coke, like a seltzer water. Anyway, we're not even done yet. A Quiet Place Part 3 is set to be produced in the near future with John Krasinski back as director. All right. Plot time. Honestly, this movie is pretty much the combination of... Harold and Kumar go to White Castle and World War Z. All right, let me just explain. A Quiet Place doesn't generally need that much of a breakdown. If you're watching A Quiet Place Day One, there's a pretty good chance you've seen at least A Quiet Place Part One. We got an alien invasion of blind monsters that hunt by sound. We don't know where they came from. We damn sure don't know why they got so much smoke, but they out here and they eating anything that makes a peep. Here in A Quiet Place Day One, we see what that invasion looks like on day one in one of the loudest cities in the world. New York City. Now we're following our lead, Sam, who's played by Lupita Nyong'o. She's currently in hospice care battling cancer. Some of her hospice homies take a trip into the city to watch a show. Sam agrees to tag along only because she wants to get pizza. Naturally, halfway through the show, the invasion begins, and we're watching Sam and her cat Frodo navigate these alien-infested streets to safety and more importantly, to pizza. And now we got a movie. So what's my take? 
Ugh. It was almost there. Okay, first things first, Lupita eats like how she always eats. And maybe she's eating a little bit even better than what she normally eats. In a movie called A Quiet Place, it's obviously not so heavy on the dialogue. You gotta be super non-verbal, super believable. We've seen her in scary movies like us, so it's not shocking that she kills it here as well. Yes, it could sound dumb that she wants to find pizza in the middle of all this craziness, but we in that crowd damn sure rooting that she gets that pizza. Beyond that, just this angle of someone fighting for their life while fighting for their life, it's just very cool to see. Like, this woman is quite literally terminally ill from cancer. She has every reason to just lay down and succumb to this alien invasion. I guess it's just a nice reminder that cancer patients are some of the best fighters that we got. But it ain't just Lupita. You pretty much care about all the characters, which in stark difference from the other two movies, not only are these people not family, they're complete strangers. You see, people be trying to say that New Yorkers are rude, but here we are in the middle of an alien invasion, helping out our fellow man. The director said he wanted to show that there was still hope and there was still humanity. It's a beautiful thing. I also liked her partner in crime in the movie, the British law student named Eric. He's played by Joseph Quinn. You might know Joseph Quinn if you watch Stranger Things. Just good chemistry in the movie, like such an unlikely pair and we just rooting for these two to just figure it out. And then of course the cat Frodo. This is basically Sam's service animal, which was actually played by two real cats. There were no CGI cats in this movie. You kind of get annoyed that she's bringing this cat everywhere trying to just fight this thing. It would be a lot easier without the cat. But two things. One, you understand why she needs it. And two, when you think about it, if anybody could sneak around New York City without being seen or heard, it's going to be a cat. The director said that they had a bunch of animal trainers on set just trying to get these cats to do what they needed them to do. It was pretty cool. Also, fun fact, did you know that before shooting this movie, Lupita was actually afraid of cats? They had to set up time with Lupita and these two actor cats in the room. And like Lupita was on this side and the cats on this side and Lupita would like slowly but surely like come over and like say hello to the cats and all this kind of stuff. It's so crazy. What's even crazier is that by the end of filming, Lupita went out and got her own cat. You know, justice for cats. I know everybody out there is a dog person, but sometimes cats need love too. They're nice. Anywho, even though the movie is tense and I was invested in the characters, A Quiet Place Day One just doesn't have the iconic moments that the first two movies had. Like when you think of A Quiet Place Part Two, that bear trap scene, boy, I was in the theater not breathing. I mean, COVID was still in the air, so that's probably part of it, but that was a moment. A Quiet Place Part 1, that bathtub scene, and then the nail, listen. Also, did you know that Emily Blunt did that bathtub scene in one take? That's goat behavior. Anyway, there's not like a moment like those three moments in this movie where you know for sure people are going to talk about it when they leave the theater. Doesn't make it a bad movie just doesn't make it as impactful as the other two. Just my opinion. Shout out to Brandon. The other thing I didn't love about A Quiet Place Day One is that I didn't learn anything new about the aliens. I know this is a movie about the people, but making it a prequel, I expected to learn a little bit more than just seeing another city's perspective. In A Quiet Place Part One, we're a little bit in the future. Like this alien invasion had already done and happened. They invaded. They're using sign language. They know these aliens' weaknesses, they just out there surviving. If A Quiet Place Part 2 didn't exist, yeah, this day one would make sense, but can we not forget that in A Quiet Place Part 2, they showed what happened on day one? Now we're seeing it, of course, in New York City, but me as a fan, I was just hoping to see, like, what are they saying on the news? What is the government doing? How did they figure out that these monsters are blind? Like, just a little bit of something. I'm just saying a little more clues into what was happening from like a planning standpoint. Like these people are whispering in the movie right away. How would you know? I wanted a little bit more information than just knowing what New Yorkers were doing on day one. I know what New Yorkers will be doing on day one. Making a shit ton of noise and getting ate up. Not me though. I would have stood quiet. But also still got ate up. I'm going to give a quiet place day one. 3.5 stars. Not as good as the other two, 
but still a nice time with the movies. Honestly, right now, the only other thing to watch is Inside Out 2. So after you get all up in your feelings, you might as well go watch Queen Lupita. It's just a very safe movie. It's not whack. It's not spectacular. It's honestly a movie that I would normally say that you could just wait to watch it on streaming. But I think that every A Quiet Place movie should be seen in a packed movie theater. John Krasinski said from the very beginning, sound is the main character in these movies. And you're just simply not going to get that same effect watching this from your couch. A Quiet Place Day 1 is playing right now exclusively in the movie theaters. And if you want to watch A Quiet Place Part 1 and Part 2, they're on Paramount+. Plus. You guys got Paramount Plus? Oh, let me do my little closing thing. As always, thanks for checking out Taste Take. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. In the comments, let me know what you thought about the movie. Did you guys check this movie out already? Are you guys planning to check this movie out? Did you learn something in this video? Also, the real question here. If we were in an alien invasion like this, do you think you would be a survivor? I know for sure I would be a goner quite quickly, but what do you guys think for yourselves? Also, like, who do you think you would need with you to like really fight crime like the right way. Like who do you think will help you survive? Could be like a celebrity or something like we all know who you're talking about, but thanks for the time, y'all. Peace. Hey. Honestly, this city is so loud. We wouldn't even last an afternoon. Oh, you guys want to know a fun fact? Speaking of Emily Blunt, we talked about Emily Blunt from of course A Quiet Place Part One and Part Two. Anyone who knows Emily Blunt knows that her best movie is The Devil Wears Prada. Well, we're not here debating that. And anyone who knows anything about that movie knows that Stanley Tucci is eating in that movie. Stanley and Emily became friends making that movie. So when Emily and John Krasinski were getting married, she invited Stanley to the wedding. Stanley meets Emily's sister at the wedding and they're married. Like they're, like they're still married to this day. Like what a alley-oop. The Devil Wears Prada brings people together. And if you guys have never seen Devil Wears Prada, go ahead and figure some stuff out. Also, this next part is like a tiny little spoiler, but you know, Lupita's trying to get to Harlem to get the pizza. And when she gets there, it's not a soul in sight. And the way these streets be so loud at all time of day, none of that was surprising. That was the most realistic thing in this whole movie. This is what it's like all the time. That's why I like to record at the crack of dawn. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Can you guys hear this? This is like when Michael Jackson was looking out the window in the Jackson 5 and the kids was playing basketball, having fun, drinking. Well, they wasn't drinking, but they, these people were drinking. And he couldn't play because he had to rehearse. And Joseph was like, Michael, get away from that window. This is what it's like. It's torture. You think, I don't think I want to play too?